Like the title suggests, this episode was a waste of time, so let's get through this quickly. We open with an advertisement for Titania's new skincare line, known simply as She-Hulk. How was this supervillain able to avoid jail time to become a skincare model? Meh, just because. Why was she even tearing through a courtroom in the first place? Eh. Who knows, it never gets brought up again. The Titania in this episode feels like a completely different character. They don't even reference the fact that she has superpowers in this one. On a positive note, the title sequences are the most creative parts of this show. Jennifer and Bestie go to confront Titania in person to prevent her from using the name and from suing Jennifer. The genius plan they put together is to just ask her to stop and hope for the best. I want you to stop and take all of this down. What seems to be the issue? You're using my name to sell your trashy product. And you're suing me? Oh, get over it, Jennifer. Shockingly, this plan doesn't work. You two are supposedly great lawyers. How is this the best that you could come up with? Bestie later asks Jennifer why she cares so much about the She-Hulk name. So Jennifer goes into denial, suggesting that she still hates it. We are halfway through the season, but it finally feels like an arc is forming here. Jennifer will likely grow to embrace the She-Hulk name, as well as embracing being a hero by the end of the show. That said, you should really make up your mind quickly about this stuff. You know, because you're getting sued over it. In the next scene, Bestie makes an underhanded comment that she is broke. Oh, why does she have to charge her fans so much for everything? Because that's smart, Nikki. That's why she's rich and you're broke. I would wager that this is a result of bad spending habits, considering her job. She is then approached by this other lawyer. You remember him, right? He's been around. And he's back now because he wants Bestie to go with him to get a new line of sneakers, known simply as Iron Man 3s. Nah, you don't want Iron Man 3s. Those ones were terrible. Iron Man 1s were the only good ones. Other lawyer states that he has a, quote, drip broker that supplies him with all his fashion. This leads Bestie to ask him if the drip broker could make clothes for Jennifer. And this is the entire episode. The Titania trial and the fashion expedition. She-Hulk's origin happened two minutes into the first episode, but now they're going to dedicate an entire B story towards how she gets her clothing. A heavy criticism for that first episode was that major events kept coming and going at an abrupt pace, but now we spend this whole episode just waiting for things to happen. The drip broker leads the other lawyer and bestie to a cafe that is supposedly a front for a superhero clothing business. And... come on guys, really? It turns out that this cafe is selling bootleg merch, and I no longer have interest in talking about this, so we're just gonna skip ahead. Later, they dress up like idiots and go to schedule a meeting with a real superhero designer. No one forced them to dress this way, they did it because it's funny. Jennifer's boss then meets with her to assign her a new lawyer to represent her in her lawsuit. Why didn't you trademark your own pseudonym? I never even thought about it. You know, why would I? Uh, did Doctor Strange have to trademark his name? Did Thor? You chose two examples of people who use their real names. Oh really? You can't trademark Thor's name because it is in fact his real name and not a title? You could have fooled me. New lawyer tells Jennifer that she needs to not dress like an idiot if she's going to be her client. The self-awareness is appreciated, but shallow as always. Jennifer is not really that large. Even if she needs custom suits, she should already have the money and means to get some quickly. But since stupid people create stupid problems, we're going to drag this out. But it doesn't matter anyway, because She-Hulk shows up to court looking like an ogre regardless. Nice suit, Shrek. Hey, how dare you? This is Shrek. Call her... Fiona. With all the courtroom scenes we've had so far, the writers seem to think trials are meant to be like debates, where both parties just talk over each other and argue until the judge randomly picks a winner. You cannot copyright magic. No. There is precedent. The precedent that you are referring to is for card tricks and uh, disappearing women who never speak. He deserves compensation for the financial and emotional trauma that he has suffered. My client and Mr. Bukowski were in a consensual relationship and engaged in role play. Oh, gross. No. We asked the court to grant our motion for summary judgment and order our requested remedies. Okay. <laughs> First of all, this Titania trial in particular is relying on Jennifer to prove that she uses the She-Hulk name in her daily life in order for her to win a countersuit. Now, I'm no lawyer, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it takes more than just using a name in your daily life to own it legally. The ultimate warrior could have taught them a thing or two here. She-Hulk then meets Discount Edna Mode to get a new suit. Oh my god. Is the hag convention in town? Why did she wait to do this until after the trial? Because we're setting up an epic reveal moment, where she shows up looking stunning and everyone goes poggers. Hey, what's with the potbelly on Batman back there? Discount Edna reluctantly agrees to make Jennifer a suit, and we move on. Jennifer and Bestie then ogle at the new lawyer. Oh, 
Oh, she's so impeccable. Where does she shop? I don't know. Someone with that light parking. Pretty sure she almost killed some men for doing something similar in the first episode. But uh-oh, one of her old dates turns out to be a client for her law firm. Except he acts like a completely different character now. But what about super speed, night vision, I impenetrable skin? Yeah, my skin is impenetrable, at least with anything on Earth. Even vibranium? We should, um... Yeah, we should reconnect soon. Yeah, absolutely. Did a whole other writer make this episode without talking to the first one? In any case, this gives Jennifer the idea to present her dating profile to the court as evidence that she uses the She-Hulk name, also bringing in all her bad dates as witnesses. Okay. If DreamWorks tried to sue me for selling illegal Shrek merch, I wouldn't be in the right just because I used Shrek's name on my Tinder account. You can't just do this. This isn't evidence at all. This is just nothing. But fine, whatever. Let's just roll with it. We then get a series of awkward moments because Jennifer's dating profile gets read out to the court, and we hear what the bad dates think of her. It is mostly a cringy waste of time, but then the trophy returns and says that he was only interested in She-Hulk and wanted nothing to do with normal Jennifer Walters. This makes Jennifer sad. So let's start making theories, everyone. How will this play out? Will Jennifer A look down on the trophy for not being attracted to her, with the arc being that she learns not to listen to the world because she is already perfect? AKA the Captain Marvel path? Or will she learn to look inwards and change her ways to become a better person? The Lightning McQueen path? Which hero's journey will she choose? Take your picks. And of course, after the trophy's testimony, the judge immediately rules in Jennifer's favor. No cross-examination needed, amongst other numerous problems with this scene. As a result, Titania has to rebrand her skincare line, but she swears to She-Hulk that she will be back. Can't wait. She-Hulk's walk cycle is less believable than the Martian girl from Mars Attacks. After leaving the courtroom, this is what the new lawyer says in regards to the trophy's testimony. What that extremely attractive man said in there, you can do better. You deserve better. Oof, not looking too good for the Lightning McQueen arc. They then go out to buy drinks and talk crap about men. That's why Holloway pays me the medium bucks. Holloway could never have gone through that. He's never had to prove his value to a parade of underwhelming men. <laughs> right? Like, think about everything that She-Hulk brings to the table, and those guys were my best option. You can have literal superpowers, and some guy with an internet connection will still think he can do better. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Cute, except all your problems are your own fault. That's why Holloway pays me the medium bucks. If you're unhappy with your pay, then don't accept jobs without learning any details about them. Take some time. I accept. I it, it would also be a good idea to present yourself in a way that doesn't look foolish or incompetent. Holloway could never have gone through that. He's never had to prove his value to a parade of underwhelming men. <laughs> this is referring to their boss. And if the show says he's never had to do that, then I'll believe it. However, I would also assume that he isn't dumb enough to get himself stuck in these situations in the first place. Like, think about everything that She-Hulk brings to the table, and those guys were my best option. You, you had all the power with your dates. You had dozens upon dozens of eager matches waiting to meet you, yet you subjected yourself to the worst of the bunch. You don't have to go on dates. If you don't have good matches, don't go out. Yeah, it sucks that this guy only liked you for being She-Hulk, but that's all you presented yourself as. You catfished the man. You can have literal superpowers and some guy with an internet connection will still think he can do better. If some guy on the internet knows how trademarks work, then yeah, he probably could do better here. You set the bar very low. The two then have an awkward interaction when Jennifer calls them friends. I am so happy we're friends now. What? Did I? Women, am I right? She-Hulk then returns to get her new clothes from Discount Edna, with the implication that she has a lawyer suit and a superhero suit. Tune in next week to see it. Oh, by the way, apparently Daredevil shops here too now. So here we go. I guess Melvin is still in the slammer. And apparently there's no post credit scene, so I guess that was a lie. But it's for the best, because the sooner this ends, the better.